Now, I think we need to be probably a little bit more restrictive relative to the Psalms. The Psalms can be divided. For instance, there are Psalms that are known as pilgrim Psalms. There are Psalms that are known as imprecatory Psalms. There's many different classifications. I suppose the greatest is to say that there are messianic Psalms. And when we come to Psalm 2, we'll be talking about the Messianic Psalms. There are 16 of them in all. But privately and personally, I think that the book of Psalms, that there's not only 16 of them speaking of Christ. And, of course, that means they're quoted in the New Testament. But I think the 150 of them are all about Christ. I said at the beginning, this is a hymn book. And the hymn book, the way you spell him here is H-I-M. It's all about him. And I think as we go through the book of Psalms, we'll see that. But now in a more restrictive sense, the Psalms do have to do with Christ belonging to Israel and Israel belonging to Christ. Both are connected with the rebellion of man. There's no blessing to this earth until Israel and Christ are brought together. And the Psalms, I think, are Jewish in expectation and hope. And the worship of Psalms are actually Jewish. They adopted, of course, to the temple. But that doesn't mean that they do not have a spiritual application and interpretation for us today, actually. They do, as I said. Here's where I turn, and more probably than any other portion of the Word of God. But we need to be a little exact in our interpretation of the Psalms. Now, God is not spoken of as a father in the book of Psalms. The saints are not called sons. He was God the Father, but not the Father God. The Psalms know nothing of the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit. And the blessed hope of the New Testament is actually not in the Psalms. I think that is the thing that's led many astray in Psalm 2. The reference there is not the taking out of the church, but the reference to the coming of Christ there is his second coming to this earth to establish his kingdom, to reign in Jerusalem. All of that is in the book of Psalms. The Psalms are actually full of the second coming of Christ. And there's judgment in the Psalms. And the judgment does not apply to Christians under grace by any means or to God's people that he's redeemed. The principle that runs through Psalms, the principle is stated in one Psalm, and I think probably I should reserve this for another time, but let me just mention it here. The principle that runs through the Psalms is that one Psalm states the principle, and then there will be several Psalms that will be explanatory. In fact, we'll start out with Psalm 1, and then we begin to move up, and it's just like going up a stairway. And then we come to Psalm 8, that great creation Psalm that speaks of Christ. And so we will... Notice that there is always that ascending and also descending. And there are many other things that could be said about the Psalms. For instance, it's the inspired book of prayer and praise. It is the soul's anatomy, the soul's epitome. It is the garden of Scripture. Of 218 quotations of the Old Testament and the New Testament, a hundred and sixteen are from the